Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's your boy, Pigskin Pete. Happy Wednesday to everybody. Today, we're going to talk about one of the hottest trends in college football, transfers. And not just transfers, but today we're going to talk about some of the interesting quarterback transfers. Uh, was it yesterday or the day before I made a video in regards to Chase Bryce transferring? And uh, But there's some other ones, big names out there. Uh, one of them uh, transferred, uh, you know, like a month ago. Uh, another one just transferred, or two of the other ones just transferred here in the, in the last couple of days. The one everybody's reading about in the news is the Eric King, former Houston quarterback. This is a really interesting story with this guy. So, uh, you know, this he's, he's transferring to Miami is the is the news that came out. And I'm looking forward to hearing from some of my uh, regular Miami fan callers that call in on my call-in show at the end of this week. Uh, Slim Shady Canes in, in particular always calls in uh, to get his thoughts on this. But uh, let's just look at uh, how this changes things for both Houston and Miami. First of all, what we saw him do at Houston was sort of like the Kelly Bryant situation. A little bit different, though. Um, the difference is, so for, for, for all you guys who follow college football, you know, just starting uh, in 2018, we had a new red shirt rule imp implemented where that allowed any player to play up to four games and still red shirt. Now the difference, and, that, and that's exactly what Derek King did after four games at Houston last year, he saw the season was going nowhere and he didn't want to burn his final year of eligibility on a team that was going nowhere. So he removed himself from the situation uh, he, ba he, for all intents and purposes, benched himself so he could keep another year of eligibility. Now, at the time, he said all the right things. You know, I'm, I'm a Houston Cougar. I plan on, you know, staying in Houston, blah, blah, blah. Everybody knew he wasn't going to do that. Now, they had a new coach. The, the coach, uh, Holgerson, that came from West Virginia, came down last year. So he had a new coach, didn't have a relationship with him. Team was going nowhere. Uh, they, this guy took it upon himself to bench himself to save himself so he could transfer uh, as a graduate this year and start immediately. Now, Kelly Bryant was a different story because Kelly Bryant didn't bench himself. Kelly Bryant had all the intentions of, of finishing out the season as the starter in 2018. He got benched by Dabo Sweeney, and Dabo Sweeney named Trevor Lawrence the starter and uh, after four games, which gave the opportunity for Kelly Bryant to make his own decision. Uh, which he did, ended up to transferring to Missouri. Y'all know the story about that. But anyway, so this is just a, you know, it, it's a new world we live in with these transfers. But what Derrick King did at, uh, at Houston was pretty amazing, especially his 2018 season. Now, over his entire career there, he accounted for over 7,000 yards total. 5,000 of those were passing yards. I guess 2,000 were rushing yards. In 2018, he accounted for 50 touchdowns, both on the ground and through the air. When he announced that he was transferring from Houston to Miami, he automatically became fourth in Heisman odds in Las Vegas. The only three people that are ahead of him at this point in the Heisman odds for 2020 are Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence, and Spencer Rattler, who is the hot shot uh, new starter at Oklahoma. Uh, which which reminds me, while, while we're on the Spencer Rattler subject, when I made the Tra Chase Bryce transfer video and talked about some of the schools uh, where I thought he would be a good fit or that would need a quarterback and all that, uh, I got a lot of comments in the comment section saying, what about Oklahoma? What about Oklahoma? What about Oklahoma? Listen, Spencer Rattler is the guy there, and uh, that's just all there is to it. I mean, Spencer Rattler is somebody that everybody in the country wanted uh, there's no way Chase Bryce – listen, the reason Chase Bryce is leaving Clemson is because he doesn't want to be a backup. He's got two years of eligibility left. I'm pretty sure he wants to go somewhere where he's not guaranteed the spot. He will, he'll compete for the spot, but somewhere where he has a, a legitimate chance of winning the spot. And I don't think he has a legitimate chance of winning the spot with Spencer Rattler there because here's what will happen. This is, this is the unintended consequences of this transfer portal and everybody transferring now. If Chase Bryce wins the uh, the job over Spencer Rattler, Spencer Rattler is going to transfer. 
and Oklahoma doesn't want to do that. Spencer Rattler spent the last year on the bench behind Jalen Hurts. It's his turn. So for all the people out there that are looking for Chase Bryce to go to Oklahoma, it's not going to happen. So stop that. Uh, well, I'd be willing to bet a lot of money it wouldn't happen anyway. Anyway, so Derek King going from Houston to uh, Miami is huge. This is something uh, – so Miami has a new offensive coordinator. Uh, they brought in Rhett uh, Lashley, I think is the way you say his name, from SMU. And um, he's going to do a lot of running around. He's a true dual threat, obviously. Uh, he makes a lot of plays with his legs. This guy's in a, a, he's a, a, a world-class athlete. This will help out Miami. This is what Miami needs. Now, the problem with Miami, if you're a fan of Miami, and the, I'm sure you guys are ec- ecstatic to have this guy, a guy uh, quarterback with, of this talent to come into Miami for a year, that's, that's great. And I'm sure he's going to, uh, you know, give you a better chance to win more games than you would if he didn't come there. But you have a couple of other two or three quarterbacks there, uh, Jaron Williams uh, and Kosey Perry and Tate Martell, which I don't even know if you consider Tate Martell to be a quarterback at this point. They're moving to wide receiver. They're moving back to quarterback. Move, hell, next thing you know, he'll be playing uh, on defense. I don't know. Uh, he's not big enough probably to play defense. But anyway, the point is, now who's going to transfer from Miami? Is Jaron Williams going to say, I'm out of here? Isn't Kosey Perry going to say, I'm out of here? Tate Martell, he, hell, he's stuck there at, at some position. This guy already transferred from Ohio State when Justin Fields got there. Anyway, this, this is the thing. Every time somebody transfers as a grad transferred to, to your school, a lot of other people automatically leave because they figure, I'm not going to waste my time. They didn't bring this guy in just to be on the practice squad. They brought him in here to take my job, and I don't want him to take my job. So I expect one of those guys or both uh, will probably be transferring here pretty soon. The next guy I want to talk about, I haven't talked about this at all because I was too caught up in all the stuff that was going on during the season. This is a, a transfer that happened, like I said, uh, before the bowl season even started. Jake... Ben, my favorite guy in the whole world, Jake Bentley from South Carolina. Wasn't surprised at all when he announced he was transferring. I pretty much saw that coming. Transferred to Utah, though. That was a little bit surprising to me of all the places. Um, I was, the funny thing is I was listening to the radio this morning on uh, Sirius XM uh, with Greg McElroy. And uh, Greg McElroy said... I think he went, uh, or and Tom Tom Luganbill. I, uh, Tom Luganbill's the one that said it, not McElroy. Luganbill said, "Yeah, I think he just wanted to get as far away from South Carolina as he could, so he went all the way out to Utah, <laughs> which I thought was funny and probably true." Uh, look, Jake Bentley is as hard of a time as I give him, as a lot of uh, Clemson fans give him a hard time because of some of the comments that he made about Clemson in his time there, um, the, the whole "never again" deal, and they're not that much better than us, and all that. Uh, Jake Bentley's career at South Carolina was a very bipolar one. 7,500 yards total in his career there. 55 touchdowns, not great. I mean, uh, listen, we just saw uh, Justin Fields and uh, Joe Burrow get that in one season. He was there for three. And uh, 32 interceptions, so he was known as an interception machine. Now, the, the, the least that I'll give Jake Bentley is that he was playing in an offense that just was bad. I mean, they had a they had a couple of pretty good skill players on the outside. Uh, offensive line was awful. Now, he maybe one of those years he had a legit run threat. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I I, I don't know. I, I don't think that Jake Bentley is as bad as his stats say. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Now the guy who he's replacing or the guy who I think he's going to be competing with for the starting job, who is the, uh, I think he's going to be a senior this year at Utah is Tyler Huntley, Tyler Huntley. Listen, everybody was on Utah's, you know what, all season. They were literally maybe a game away from making the playoffs, even though they probably didn't belong there. Pac 12 pretty weak this year, but uh, even in the Pac 12 South, Tyler Huntley only had 18 touchdowns. And 3,000 yards, which isn't terrible, but look, uh, I think Bentley's an upgrade over this guy. I guess that's where I'm going with this. We'll see. It'll be interesting to see what Jake Bentley brings to that offense, who definitely brings a, an arm that this other guy doesn't have. Uh, Utah was a sort of a team that just played good defense and ran the football a lot. With Jake Bentley, they're going to throw it a lot more anyway. Uh, the question is, and the, the, the million-dollar question that everybody wants to know is will Jake Bentley throw it to his own team this time instead of 
the other team. So I'm interested to see how Jake Bentley fits into the Utah offense and, of course, uh, how he uh, how he does in the, in the Pac-12. I think he's going to be pretty good, honestly. I'm not going to lie. Um, but we'll see. Felipe Franks. <laughs> so Kyle Trask gets the uh, starting job at Florida. I, listen, I didn't do any research into who they have coming in as far as who they've uh, – who they've recruited, you know, as a hot shot young quarterback, but it's Kyle Trask's job right now. And so Felipe Frankfurter decides he's going to haul tail out of Gainesville. And where does he land? Arkansas. Now, look, um, is that a better situation? And I'm, listen, listen, as far as I know, and I don't know, but as far as I know, Felipe Franks was at least second on the depth chart behind Kyle Trask. So Kyle Trask could go out there and and twist his ankle in week one in 2020, and Felipe Franks would be the guy. He wasn't even willing to be that. He hauled butt to Fayetteville, Arkansas, which, listen, I know they got a new coach. They've been in a rebuild for a long time. Arkansas has... Last year was probably the worst team in in the Power Five. I'm talking about even worse than Rutgers and and Oregon State, and and Kansas and you know the, the normal bottom dwellers. But I don't know, man. I this just seems uh, this seems weird to me. Uh, I'm not sure Felipe Franks is going to raise whatever hopes he has for the draft in the NFL any higher by going to Arkansas when they're in a complete and total rebuild. They just don't have the horses yet. First of all. I think they fired uh, the coach too soon. I know they were terrible, but look what he was trying to do with, with, with what they had. This is it. We live in this era now where they just fire a coach after two, three years of being bad, but uh, they're still in a rebuild. So Felipe Franks, listen, I'll give him credit. If he wants to be part of a rebuild, good for him. Um, I, I, I wish him the best, I guess. Uh, I just don't see much success there at Arkansas for, for Felipe Franks. I think he'd have been better off staying at, at, uh, at Florida, but Hey, listen, it's his decision. Uh, the last guy we've already talked about was Chase Bryce. And I gave you my opinions on where I think he would fit best and maybe some interesting places for him to go. But aside from what I think, just listening to other people talk, there's uh there's talk that Purdue has contacted Chase Bryce which I didn't even think about Purdue at all, honestly. But uh, it's actually, now that I think about it, kind of an interesting fit for him. Also, what somebody, something that somebody brought up that I thought was really interesting, and I don't even know if these guys are interested in him or if he's interested in going there, but that would be going to Duke to uh, be a tutor, uh, tutor E underneath David Cutcliffe. We know David Cutcliffe is an elite quarterback um, developer, right? Um, he's got he's got a lot of guys in the NFL that are, were under his tutelage. So if Chase Bryce is just wanting, you know, if he's not caring so much about winning conference championships or, or going to playoffs, but his his number one uh, motive is to go develop as best as he can for the NFL, the Duke would actually be a pretty good fit for him with David Cutcliffe. David Cutcliffe, like I said, has a a resume uh, of of doing that for for quarterbacks. So that's an interesting one too. Uh, a lot of listen. There's a lot of places, man. I, I mentioned Mississippi State and Mike Leach. Uh, I mentioned Michigan and Jim Harbaugh. I got some people uh, disagreeing with me about that, saying Jim Harbaugh, you know, has proven to, to ruin quarterbacks. He can't develop quarterbacks. Well, that might be true. I, I just don't know. Listen, Jim Har as as much as I come down on Jim Harbaugh, and there, listen, there might be one Michigan fan on this entire YouTube channel because I've scared them all off because I, I, I nobody is harder on Jim Harbaugh in Michigan than me. You would almost think I'm an Ohio State fan as hard as I am on Jim Harbaugh in Michigan. But the fact of the matter is, Jim Harbaugh did coach Andrew Luck at Stanford. Let's not forget about that. Now, Andrew Luck was just a unique talent anyway. I'm not so sure how much. Jim Harbaugh had to do with developing Andrew Luck. I think Andrew Luck could have went anywhere and still been Andrew Luck. But at the end of the day, is there anybody on that Jim Harbaugh has had under center at Michigan since he's been there that can hold a candle to to Andrew Luck? No. So Jim Harbaugh, maybe not developing great quarterbacks, but he's also not getting great quarterbacks to develop. So this is the sort of the chicken or the egg thing. Is it Jim Harbaugh not being able to develop quarterbacks or is it him not having good quarterbacks to develop. I don't know. That's why I think Chase Bryce would be an interesting fit at Michigan. 
And uh, so I'm listen. He's the only one out of all these three. We know where Derek King's going. We know where Jake Bentley's going. We know where Felipe Franks is going. We don't know where Chase Bryce is going. I'll be following this very closely. I can't wait till he announces so that I can look further into the situation and dive into that. Anyways, that's a long enough video for today. Uh, leave your comments, criticisms, uh, all of that in the comment section below. Make sure, I, I always forget to say this, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, blah, blah, blah. And again, I'll announce when I'm doing my call-in show at the end of this week so I can get a couple of Miami, at least one or two Miami fans to call in and talk to me more in depth about Derek King. Have a great day. Pigskin Pete, checking out.